Finally, AMD has come back to budget PC gaming. So after about a year of just horrible prices on B650 motherboards and just the AM5 platform in general, it looks like AMD is coming back down to earth. Like we're starting to see B650 motherboards, decent, good motherboards for under $150. And I'm not going to lie, that got me a little tingly in my no-no place. Now it got me thinking, is AMD back to being the budget kings they once were? Well, before we get into that, today's video sponsor wanted me to tell you. If you're in the market for a pre-built gaming PC, hop over to PCBros.Tech. PCBros.Tech has gaming PCs for every budget. Heck, even these guys can afford one. Not looking for a gaming PC? No problem, as they also have high quality merch like this giant build mat that's 2 feet by 4 feet, or this comfy hoodie that your significant other can steal from you later. Better get to. I mean, they even have extended mouse pads to finish off your gaming setup. So head over to PCBros.Tech today and use code PINKYTECH4 for 4% off your order. And now, back to the show. Now the goal of today's video is to build a reasonable gaming PC on the AM5 platform. So no bottom of the barrel components, no A620 motherboards, no bottom barrel PSUs, etc. Not even going to use the, the AMD 7500F, which is a mysterious AM5 CPU that was supposed to have 6 cores and 12 threads and be $180 at launch, except for you can't actually find it anywhere except for in some pre-builds over on Newegg. So starting off with this build, we have the Ryzen 5 7600 non-X version uh, paired with a B650 motherboard and 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM and the CPU cooler being the Deepcool AK500. So once again, a reasonable platform, not the cheapest, not the most expensive. Rounding out the rest of the components, we have the Radeon RX 7600 uh, from, uh, I think, the Sapphire Pulse one. We also have one of my favorite micro ATX cases in the Montec Air 100 ARGB, though this case regularly sells out, so you could swap it for any other micro ATX case. And then we also threw in an 850 watt power supply and a two terabyte NVMe drive, because if you're gonna go to AM5 and with storage prices the way they are right now, Two terabytes is the way to go and get rid of the one terabyte and having to manage game libraries and all that good stuff. Now this PC is gonna come out to about $1,100 give or take on what pricing looks like that day and would actually be a very good gaming PC. And if you're interested in putting a PC like that together, I'll have affiliate links down below for all those parts. Now once again, this is a great gaming PC. You're two to $300 cheaper than when AM5 launched. You're on all current gen hardware and prices keep getting lower every day. Or maybe not every day, but like, Maybe not today, but tomorrow, you know, it's trending the right direction. Now it's great that AM5 is cheaper than it was, but that's what happens. Technology comes out, it's expensive, and then it starts getting cheaper. And right now, DDR5 memory prices and storage prices have dropped lower than my attention span. So if we're gonna call AM5 the new budget kings, we kinda need to compare what they would look like to a similarly spec Intel system. So if we look at a similarly priced system and just replace the Ryzen 5 7600 with an Intel 13400 and the B650 motherboard with a B760 motherboard, then we're going to see that the Intel is about $50 cheaper. And remember, we're keeping DDR5 and all the other parts, so this is about as apples to apples as we can get, minus the 13400 is going to have more cores because it has the efficiency cores that are packed into the 13th gen Intel systems. So better competition, but certainly not cheaper yet. Now what really kicks AMD in the backside is the fact that we could actually drop the 13400 down to a 13100, and that's a four core, eight thread CPU, and we could widen the price gap about $150. Now of course, performance is going to take a big hit too, going to a four core, eight thread processor versus a six core, 12 thread processor. But if you wanna get the price under $1,000, Intel has the option to do that on their current gen platforms, and AMD just doesn't right now. And if you really want to go budget, we could also drop down to a motherboard with a DDR4 platform and you're dropping prices by probably another 50 or so dollars there too. So AMD just really doesn't have anything current gen to compete in the very bottom space of that gaming PC genre. So we can't crown AMD the current budget kings per se, but it is very nice to see them competing, at least price-wise, being competitive with the current gen Intel. So if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button. After all, that's what it's for. Uh, consider subscribing to the channel and following me on my other social media platforms. And as always, guys, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video.